you are dependent on this company and you probably don't even know it exists. A lithography machine is arguably the most sophisticated and advanced piece of engineering ever made. It's the size of a double-decker bus and needs 20 trucks and three full-loaded Boeing 747s to be transported. This machine does one thing to nanometer precision. It prints circuitry on silicon chips used in literally everything from the F-35 jet to the device you're watching this video on. The latest lithography machine could cost up to 350 million US dollars, printing 185 silicon wafers per hour. The rise of ASML and their absolute monopoly of the lithography market is a fascinating story, one which we'll dive into today, so stay tuned. ASML had humble beginnings in a shed in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Formed from a joint venture between two tech giants, electronics company Philips and chip machine manufacturer ASMI, with the aim to research and develop lithography systems in the booming semiconductor market. Along the years, the company grew with financial backing both from Philips and ASMI. In the first year, ASML launched their first lithography machine, the PAS 2000 Stepper. In the decade that followed, ASML launched their breakthrough lithography machine and the company eventually went public in 1995, being listed on the Amsterdam and New York stock exchanges. This independence brought in the much needed capital for future growth and expanded production facilities in Veldhoven, which is now the company's headquarters. In the years that followed, ASML acquired companies and suppliers to strengthen their position in the global market. 2010 marked the first shipment of the Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography Prototype Machine. This technology and the high demand for chips made ASML an extremely valuable company, more valuable than Intel, one of ASML's primary customers. So what is EUV lithography? I'll try to keep it as simple as humanly possible. So to generate EUV light, tiny droplets of tin are ejected from a nozzle. This is blasted with two CO2 laser pulses, which vaporize the tin and creates EUV light. The first pulse swells the tin, followed by the main pulse which heats the tin to an astonishing 200,000 degrees Celsius, transforming it into a plasma that is almost 40 times hotter than the surface of the sun. The ignited tin then emits the EUV light. This process is repeated for 50,000 times every second. So EUV light is absorbed by basically everything. Thus the entire light path from the light source to the wafer is contained fully within a vacuum chamber. The light is reflected on a series of mirrors and enters the reticle. Reticles are multi-stage reflectors that shape the pattern of the light to be printed on the wafer. A series of high precision mirrors then reflect the EUV light onto the wafer. Manufactured by Zeiss in Germany, these mirrors are extremely precise to have as little losses as possible. The light is then projected onto the wafer surfaces, which prints the desired circuitry to nanometer precision. And that's what's fascinating about EUV. This technology has allowed chips to house more transistors within the same area, allowing electronics to not only be faster, but smaller and perform more efficiently complex computations. For a bit of context, the smallest transistors are 10,000 times thinner than a human hair. There could be up to 10 billion transistors on a single chip, and there are hundreds of chips on every wafer. The statement I started this video with is that only ASML make these types of machines. It's absolutely true. But why is that? You see, the company put all its eggs in one basket and the investment turned out to be a huge success. When ASML started researching and experimenting with EUV in the late 90s, everyone else thought that it was too risky. But by 2018, ASML showed that EUV was indeed possible. ASML does technically have two Japanese competitors, Nikon and Canon, who manufacture DUV or Deep Ultraviolet Lithography. ASML also manufactures DUV machines, however, this technology still isn't as advanced 
as EUV. Speaking of DUV, there's a bit of an ongoing global chip war, if you haven't noticed. You see, a total of 42 countries have agreed to limit exports of EUV machines to one specific country, China. The country has long wanted to get into the semiconductor race and it actually buys older generation DUV machines from ASML. You see, a large majority of chips required in electronics today do not necessarily require EUV. And that's exactly what China is currently doing. You see, with DUV lithography, you could still make pretty good chips and they're using them in their smartphones, appliances and other electronic devices. However, recent tariffs and trade restrictions with China have impacted ASML's value by a staggering $130 billion. The company is certainly benefiting from the US-EU trade and tariff deal as investors have more certainty in the market. ASML has been developing an even more sophisticated machine since 2016, high NA lithography. Much of the system is identical to EUV, however the main difference is the wider aperture of the lens, which increases the light captured and reflected by the mirrors. The higher light levels allow for a higher resolution of print with every mask thus less time is required to print every wafer. Obviously the downside to this is the higher initial costs, approximately $400 million a piece. The main costs revolve around the larger mirrors and higher power demand of the machine. Thus ASML are currently researching ways to improve the power efficiency of high-end name machines. If you want to dig deeper into semiconductors, I made an entire video about the intricate design of transistors and how they work. I hope you've earned your subscription and let us know what you think in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys!